plaintiff, Edward Doyle, was a deputy sheriff in Los Angeles County in the 80s and 90s, and he claims he witnessed so much corruption that he had no choice but to resign. Edward then suffered from PTSD and became homeless. But his life is now on track, and he's suing his former friend for a loan and emotional distress. Defendant James Cornelius admits he was a drug dealer back in the day, and he was in and out of prison. James admits he became homeless after his last stint in prison, but insists he never sold another drug again. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. State your name. Yes, uh, Your Honor. It's a pleasure to meet you, by the way. My name is Edward Doyle. Sir? My name is uh, James Cornelius, Your Honor. All right. And, sir, you're suing your former friend for $2,797 for unpaid loan and emotional distress? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Start with you. Okay. Basically, I'd like to just give you a quick rundown of my back, you know, who I am. And uh, my name is Edward Doyle, as I've stated. And uh, I'm an honorably discharged veteran from the United States Marine Corps. I was a deputy sheriff for several years in the Los Angeles County area where I worked. When did you stop? Um, I stopped in the uh, early 90s, Your Honor. I've noticed that I've, uh, you know, things are done a lot differently nowadays than they were back in the early 80s and the 90s. It was worse? Oh, it was, things were way different than they are now. Yeah, There's a LA lot of was, uh, LA was one of the ghetto worst. cops that uh, so-called cliques of officers that would create. Right, the gangs. Correct. Police gangs. Correct, Your Honor. Deputy sheriff gangs. Absolutely. Where they rob yes. you, they kick in, house, kick in doors, they're worse than the criminals, but I'll let really you tell did, me. Uh, really enforce the laws they saw fit and uh, basically uh, that kind of uh, policing back then was encouraged if not uh, it was done quite frequently I was around it and involved in similar incidents to the Rodney King thing I seen that on a daily basis as you realize it creates a lot of stress in that type of job uh, actually what happened to me was I was actually uh, decided to resign for personal reasons and had created a PTSD from the stressors involved in that job um, it's really bizarre as I, I became homeless for five years, lived in a tent, and was forced to live around the same individuals that I had made prejudgments mm, on. Yeah, that you had to uh, rest oversee. Really tough to deal with uh, at that time to realize what I had thought was, you know, my own judgments. Uh, it really helped me as far as uh, fixing some of my stressors and my, my, you know, things that I had, had developed while I was homeless. It was a, it was really an amazing experience, very uh, educational, by the Just way. Just so we uh, give the benefit of the doubt to other deputy sheriffs and other officers in particular, because most are good police officers, there's a significant amount that aren't, though. That's and so those are the ones we're talking about, that significant amount, somewhere probably 20, 30 percent, it is estimated, uh, of corruption that's correct. among police. You say that's correct. I am making it up. Defendant James Cornelius is being sued by his former friend who claims he resigned from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in the 90s due to all the corruption he witnessed on the force. Let me ask you, well, how much of it was race-based or race Well, uh, it's hard applied? to say. Well, I mean, I worked in an area where there were no, uh, it wasn't racial at all because there's there was no white people in that area, if you see where I'm coming from. But the police, <laughs> were the police racist in the Yeah, policing? most of the police officers were um, upper to middle class, you know, white people white uh, officers. All uh, white people aren't racist. Though. Correct. That's absolutely this correct. Crowd, this crowd was yes. a lot of it involved. Yes. It's, it's a strange thing because if you really look at it, when you have people that have never been in that type of a life enforcing the law on people that are, they're, they're enforcing the law on people that are totally opposite from them. So it's like it's, it, to, for an officer to become experienced in that, you'd have to almost go through that to be to be understanding that type, that type of living in that environment. There totally. you go. Community engagement, community policing. Absolutely. Have police. I worked for Mayor Young in Detroit, and he was elected the first black mayor because he of his police stance, his equal yeah. justice toward policing. Yeah. He established 12 mini stations. And you know who went in those mini stations? Detroit hiring police officers why and what was the objective? To eliminate 
police brutality Correct. because we came to know that it's based on fear. Police yes. officers fear what they don't know. Usually so, they're from a different class of environment. That's what I'm getting to. Unless they're looking at that as fear. Plus, how can you respect somebody if it's an us against them atmosphere instead of you give respect, you get respect. That's how it's gained. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that by working in custody, not by going through the academy for three months and then getting a gun and going out and trying to enforce Correct. The and the point I was making is that we recruited officers in the neighborhood. Correct. To staff the mini station. And so you'd have four officers in a little area, tough, or oh, what good, tough, whatever areas, 12 different sections of town. Yes. And they would walk around the community. We even had resources where they could come in. If you need help with your sidewalk repair, go to the mini station. So the residents were friendly and liked the police because the police were friendly to them, Correct. knew their reality, and helped them. <laughs> And that's why it's so important to have police engagement with the community and as much as you can have those police that have lived the same reality oh, uh, police those yes. um, of, of like reality. In other words, if you are from a middle class or wealthy suburb, well, we apply, okay, this police officer, he wants to be a police, where do we put him? Uh, oh, he's a good fit over here. Absolutely. He grew up over here. He grew up like this. He knows their reality. He knows their thought process. Absolutely. It's, yep. He knows when to be fearful and when not to be and fearful. And you cannot learn that in a book. It's yeah, not yeah. in a book. you got to actually live it. I mean, there was a lot of things that, that, that I had come across just because I was a police officer. Then when I became homeless, I understood some things. I mean, there's a whole different lingo, or language of speaking of people when it comes to gang members and drug addicts and criminals. No question about it. And uh, it's a different respect. You can live around people and they can become your family, not even related to you, just because they treat you as though you are loved and accepted. Do you do any lecturing? Um, no, we'll but I don't. talk about these things otherwise? No, I haven't, but... Um, Obviously, you know, I think that uh, I've created some of my skills. I'm a very good writer because of what I used to do. Do you think, you, are you fearful of telling your story and the things that you know? Um, I thought about it. I've had people approach me and tell me that, hey, you should make a movie or do something with that. It's really interesting. It, I, you know, I didn't realize Those it at the time. Those guys still around? <laughs> <laughs> if they're around, don't do it. <laughs> but People want to know why they haven't made a movie on my life? Because <laughs> the guys are still around. <laughs> I, can, I can feel you there, Your Honor. Yes. Um, yeah, I've thought about it, like I said. But it's, well, get some it, thought. Absolutely. Law enforcement, you were a former good police officer who knows police yes. criminals and their... How they police. Basically, yeah. That's a big part of what I do. And then we're able to distinguish the good cops from the bad. And so Absolutely. That's, the, pro that's Absolutely. the point I want to make. See this guy? All... Cops aren't bad. No, that's you're absolutely correct. Here's one that's it, even so good that he resents the bad ones. Absolutely. I saw that in there. If you're not one of the boys, you don't get treated like them, and then you're not accepted by them. So then that may, you know, makes that job tougher. It's you know the same thing on the outside. Me coming in there being an ex-cop, now I'm homeless. I wasn't really accepted really quick. It was a lot of uh, hazing, a lot of things that I had to go through that, uh, mm. you know, some stories I could tell that you know, I like to put a comedic uh, background or uh, humor in some of my things sure. that I do because it, it lightens the load as far as the stress. There you go. I try to make Serious it. Serious matters, you can lighten the load. Between the things I saw and what I know now, it's, it's really, it's <laughs> the contrast is un unreal. Defendant James Cornelius is being sued by his former friend who claims he resigned from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in the 90s due to all the corruption he witnessed on the force. So let me ask, how do you know, know the defendant? It's really, it's really, it's funny how me and him had met with two the similar stations. We're opposite, but we have a lot of similar things. What year did you all meet? Excuse me, Your Honor? What year did you meet? Uh, we met, um, it was, uh, I believe it was uh, the beginning of uh, the year 2021. Oh, okay. And I, I was pretty much over any of the stressors that I had been through, my PTSD. I'm totally clean and sober. You know, at the time mm -hmm. I had substance abuse, I've been through, you know, therapy and self medicate The program, I know all about the program and what they teach and all that. And, uh, you know. Okay, and, so you all met 
Where? We met uh, basically through uh, other friends, uh, common friends that we had, because I usually help people that are a little bit more not as um, in tune with what is available as far as government aid for them. Good. And I feel good about that. It gives me a reward if I do it. I help Absolutely. them out. And I create a lot of friends that way, because like I said, I have a comedic background with my stuff. So anyways, James and I found it very easy to be friends. In fact, I like him still. He's still a great human being. So we, we were able to talk about things he had went through when I was on the other side, it went through and I could understand him. And it's really quite a friendship that you can develop on that. It's totally opposite of it, what it, you know, what most people would think. Yeah. You know, people, you go through adversities like that. You know, you can have a friend, you get involved in something. It just builds more care. You see who the character of the person is. It's, you know, and, what and I don't hold it against them. It's just sometimes when you get involved in things and me pursuing this is the right thing to do. That's why I'm doing it. Not, when you get involved in things. Yeah. Like what? When you get involved in business relationships, involved okay. with personal Got relationships, it. you get into situations Got it. All right. where you Let shouldn't me hear do from it. You, sir. Give me some background. Well, first of all, I'd like to start off saying, uh, Judge Mathis, I've been watching you for years. And to be honest with you, there was a toss-up between you, Judge Judy, and Judge Wapner. Now, I'm being open and honest with you, but uh, I never thought today that I, I would be. I can't touch either one of them. <laughs> Judge Wapner pretty much started the court shows. Yes, sir. And Judge Judy is the best in history. And so, uh, thank you for that compliment. You put me in Judy's category. <laughs> yes, sir. So, moving right along, sir, uh, right after the Rodney King riot in, in 1993, Uprising. I, I was convicted of selling cocaine drugs, and I went to prison for approximately 16 months. Mm -hmm. And so, after I got out of prison and I got a job, and I was doing good and uh, supporting myself and everything, and then the year 2003, I fell back into my old habits again because I had surrounded myself with a handful of celebrities and movie stars and musicians, and the money was good. And uh, I wind up going back to prison, and I did just nine months on that, and they gave me like four months work furlough. I got out, got a job, but I became homeless at the time, but I've never sold another drug again since then. And so, you didn't become your own customer, did you? No, sir. <laughs> I know no, sir. you don't sell. You can just use it. Right. And, and with all due respect, I, I probably thought about it a few times, relapsed, but I was testing, so I kept it clean. And when was the last time you had that challenge? Since then. That was it. What year was that? Since 2003, you have yeah. not relapsed? No, no sir. And how does he owe you $27.99? Well, basically, just a, as anybody would, you go through things. Um, I knew at the time uh, Mr. Uh, Cornelius here was expecting an unemployment settlement because uh, I helped him with his case. And that, uh, I knew he was expecting that. And during that time, he had developed some car problems with his vehicle that he had, his, his only form of transportation. And uh, I figured that, you know, let's put our heads together, come up with something. We came up with the fact that I could get a second on my car, a title loan. I had no problem with that because I trusted him. We had done things together. He's been in my house. I've been in his. We've had dinner together, know each other's friends. We didn't sign any papers. I didn't feel it was really necessary. Maybe now I should have, but um, I didn't. We signed it. Uh, sign saying what? No, we didn't sign Not any sign, papers. But how much well, would we you shook have hands? Signed? We looked at it. It was twenty three ninety seven for the for his vehicle to get fixed. It was in the shop for okay. transmission. A little pricey, but it was definitely worth doing. Twenty three ninety seven. What was the repayment plan? Uh, the repayment plan was, and we had talked about you know the seconds. There, you know, quite a bit of interest on those types of loans. But the reason we went ahead and agreed was he was due his settlement real soon. Within oh, he the, was going to pay all in one. He time. was going to pay it back to me as soon as he received all his at settlement. One time. And it was not a problem, and I, I assumed he was too. Defendant James Cornelius is being sued by his former friend, who claims he resigned from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in the 90s due to all the corruption he witnessed on the force. What did happen? What did happen is, as we agreed, he would make the payment for three months, or however many months it was, until he received it. I knew he was getting it any time, we just didn't know when. He was good with that. He paid me for the first three months. Uh, yeah. However, when he received it, for some reason, I'm not sure what it was, uh, there was some type of personality conflict. I don't know what. 
Uh, we basically lost contact. We had a few words sir? on How the phone. How much did he receive, sir? Okay, he paid me 200 bucks for three months. How much did he receive from this filing? Uh, the I'm not sure the quite, it was uh, around $10,000, sir. And okay, how many days did he disappear? Um, well, he was gone until June of... Ham! <laughs> from January to June, which forced me to come up with that payment myself, which I had to sell some property, come up with some creative ideas of how to do that. You know, and basically I sold my laptop. He there was a lot of things 10, I did. He smoked up $10,000? <laughs> no, no, I don't believe it, it, it wasn't anything like that. Oh, so what did he do with 10000 I'm not sure. Months. I'm not even. You're don't not quote sure? me on it. Okay. It I'm not I sure. thought you was an officer. You ain't been in no street. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I don't want thousand dollars disappear <laughs> along with the man. I'm not trying to uh, incriminate anyone, I including know you're myself. Not. Including myself. You're well, you right. got to convince me. <laughs> okay. And you got to convince me yeah. with what I perceive as yes. the truth. Yes, I knew it was way in excess of what he would owe me because the, the amount of the loan was twenty three ninety seven, which was really not that much. And he, so what has happened since he got the big check? Okay, he paid me two hundred for three months, which is six hundred bucks. Then he got in touch with me in June, Your Honor, this year, and gave me another five hundred. Okay, which totaled eleven hundred dollars. Did you ever mention I thought you were gonna give it to me all at once? <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked about that. He knew that. That was what say the reason he didn't. I'm not sure what it okay. was, Your Honor. Let me but... hear from him, sir. Yes, thank you. I couldn't wait to get get in here and tell. Well, I hope you got something to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Someone part couldn't wait. W w the part was, Your Honor, I had already started receiving my SSI, Social Security, because of my age. The EDD part was my own doing. We never agreed about nothing. I have wants to pay him. Oh, so these were gifts. No, he, the loan was $2,500. Oh. I never touched the money. He paid my mechanic. Did you ever agree to pay him the $2,500 back? Yes. So what happened? He, he took the money, $2,500, and paid my mechanic himself. I never touched the money. Fast forward is I paid him $200 a month up in, from November up until the month of March. He even went out of town, out of hole, January of 2022, and I gave him money for traveling purposes. That's how he had that money. He came back uh, just before Valentine's Day. I gave him $200 for the month of March. And his lady friend and my birthday is exactly the same, which is March the 19th. I gave him $200 for the month of March. It was a total of $1,000. His lady friend, according to him, blocked our phone numbers. I couldn't get in touch with him. And we, and we weren't talking. Why do you think that? Did he tell you why she blocked the number? No, he didn't. Because and you I, couldn't get in touch with him to pay him. No, I she didn't tell you why I, you couldn't get in touch with him to pay him. I can tell you why, why. he blocked your number when he, you owed him thousands. He 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 didn't he didn't block it. He told me she did. Why? She didn't explain why. Uh, that's between him and her. But what I did was. <laughs> no, you're the one saying it. It's between me and you. Because Don't talk slick to me. No, I'm You've not. been before a judge before. And for you to run off on this man, he don't know any better. But I'm very clear. I believe you are a crackhead again. Have a good day. Judgment for the plaintiff. Bye. Thank you, Aaron. I'm saying, James, you're my friend. I, I respect you. I, yeah, you're my but friend, that man. story you told wasn't the truth, brother. You know it wasn't about yeah, that part. Sure you stopped associating with me. I didn't get into that part. You, I know, but I, I did. Because I can't prove what my, the girl I met that I was staying with actually no, knows. I don't know if You she told did. me she did, though. I assumed it. Okay. I, listen, listen to this, though. You said that to me. You said, and in my phone, I have it. You were going to kick her out and everything because all I know is it was right. Thanks for cutting me off. Thanks for cutting me off. I haven't been paid. And, and now you're jumping from one thing to another, though. But you and I both know the truth, and that's well, all I'm that matters. I'm trying to get to the details. Is one thing. The, I know you, the, you the, borrowed the money, the, and I never got the. the there were no details. The reason you didn't get paid because you wouldn't stay in contact with me. I tried to contact you. You know where I live and where we're at. How did I give you the five hundred? You came to my residence. Right, because I know where you live, just like I did the other time. Why couldn't you come with the rest of it?